We'll start with Christian Pulisic, though, because this is a big game for Chelsea, not only for Christian, but Chelsea overall. Graham Potter is now going to be in charge of his first Premier League game. They're playing away at Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. I don't think that Chris Richards is going to play. I, I, I really don't see a situation for him to play against Palace. The last time, maybe, maybe if they had a lead, they want to bring in a defender to make that happen. But the last time they did that, they were up 2-1 on Manchester <laughs> City. Chris <laughs> Richards came well. in and then Erwin Holland scored. Early in Holland scored three yeah. goals in 28 minutes to win it four is to Man two. City, though. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. And Early Holland is is an absolute unit, <laughs> so <laughs> we got to take all that into consideration. Well, I don't think we're going to see Chris Richards, but maybe we will. With regard to Christian Pulisic, though, I'm very curious as to how Graham Potter is going to use him, if at all. There's rumors coming out now. Fabrizio Romano, one of our own here at CBS, he said that Christopher Nkunku is looking to sign a potential deal for the summer of of nor next summer in 23. That's not a good sign for Christian Pulisic, obviously, that that Graham Potter's already coming in and they're already looking to find players that play in a similar position to Christian. I think he's going to be on his way out. Uh, so, 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 Charlie, I'll come to you first as our resident attacker here. No disrespect, Keith. I know you like to bomb forward sometimes. All the time. Uh, <laughs> it, it's going to be a process, no matter who the manager was. For Christian, he has got to earn his way. He's got to earn the trust of the manager and he's got to earn – not only minutes, but he's got to earn playing time and training. And it, and it goes to the back to every single day. No matter if a coach sees you in a positive light or negative light, if you perform every day in training, you're going to sway him. You're going to grow on him. And then ultimately, you're going to get an opportunity. And I, I know once you, you get past a certain, certain threshold, you feel like you, do, you shouldn't be put in that position where you have to earn your starts from coming in as a substitute. And sometimes, you know, you're down a goal, you're not getting the ball, or you're up a goal, and you got to defend, and you're not really getting to a chance to attack. It, you, you can name a number of different circumstances coming in as a substitute and not getting, feeling like you're getting a proper chance. But if that's the way it's got to be, then that's the way it's got to be. And he's got he's to come with that mentality of whenever I step on the pitch, I'm going to leave a positive impact. So Graham Potter goes back in the locker room and goes, I, I got I to gotta get more minutes out of him because he's too damn good. That's that's just got to be the mentality. And I, I hope that he just gets gets an opportunity because he, of of his, his performances and training. Well, the projected lineups that I'm seeing around don't have him in the lineup. They got Havertz on one side, Sterling on the other, and Aubameyang up top with Kovacic. That's and, no and Mason surprise. That's no no surprise, surprise. But But I'm curious to see, to your point, what he does with his minutes, because we could argue, Heath, that he didn't really take any either of the games of Japan and Saudi Arabia by the scruff of the neck and said, I'm going to take it over. I'm going to figure out a way. We saw moments where he drops in, but and then he usually... slalloms through like three guys and he gets fouled. And then and then and then we go from there. But but I've seen some chatter before you jump in. I see some chatter around the Internet and there's a lot of chatter on the Internet that says that maybe Christian Pulisic has peaked. And and. I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily true. The guy's only 24. He's got plenty of time to have a renaissance or whatever. But it does seem like he's stagnated in some ways. And it doesn't help that he's not playing, obviously, regularly. Which for his means club. You, you, some, in a lot of cases, in most cases, you need a change of scenery. And yes. You need to go somewhere yeah. where you're going to get an opportunity, where a coach fancies your game. That's typically what, what happens across the world. Guys peak maybe in a club. At that club, you've maybe peaked. So you got to go to another club. And typically, it's not a sideways step. It's probably one step back to go two steps forward. But all of a sudden, you turn from a guy who's not really playing or playing here and there to you're the guy. And you're playing every week. and you Or you turn yourself into the guy because you're starting every week. And I think that's what he needs to do at this point. Well, I think there's I, just I, – I think there's a belief go, that – I, I think there's a belief that the Christian Pulisic that we want is going to be the biggest – best superstar we've ever had. And by that, we mean through the lens of an American sports fan, which is well, how does he compare to the top 10 players in the world, right? And I don't think that's what it's going to be. Now, it becomes incremental growth and, and, and marginal that we're going to see, but we saw him take over games in the Bundesliga. The Bundesliga is not the Premier League. Bundesliga well, is even not when he Champions joined Chelsea League. initially, he was taking over games under Frank Lampard. And I know that they had less competition because they had the transfer ban at that time. And, yeah, but and they, and and, and I like I get it. He doesn't then he necessarily have there too. Yeah, and he, he doesn't did. necessarily have a final product, right? Like he's not he's not like a a bona fide goal scorer. He hasn't added little pieces that you go. How do you take him from like a winger or like an kind of introverted winger that drives inside from uh, on the weak side to being like 
a, a 10 and 10 plus goal and assist player a year, maybe that's not, maybe that's not the case. So like Charlie said, maybe it is a step back to find your, you know, 12 goals, 12 assists uh, type of season in a league where you can be the dominant force. You can be the go-to guy. You can have a little more stability because I don't think we've necessarily, necessarily seen his upside. Um, but we are seeing sort of a stagnation, so to speak right now in terms of like, we know he's fantastic, but is he world-class? There's a, there's a Delta there. And we saw him trending in that direction. And I feel like he's hit a little bit of that wall right now that he's plateauing. That doesn't mean that it's a ceiling. Okay. So say he goes to Milan, he's got, Rafael Leal. <laughs> I mean, he's not getting in over Leal. No, uh, no. Junior Messias is pretty good as well. They have solo makers. They have a whole bunch of players that are, are pretty solid. I mean, he's still going to have to go and fight. And I, and I, not to say Leal, that he's Leal, not going to fight. I, I get that. But what about Juventus? What about Juventus? Well, when Chiesa comes back, Di Maria, it's just, I, I just don't know if he's going to be. It's, Di Maria it's, is no spring chicken anymore. No, he's not. But he, he still, he still gets goals and assist contributions. Yeah pretty consistently when he's on the field. Charlie, yeah, go ahead. And they're in a wing back system. I, I would yeah, say yeah. He, he would only go to Milan if, if they, they sold Liao. And yeah, that's true. And, and I could see him getting the playing time there at least. And then it's up to him to, to try and figure out how to, how to have success in that league. Remember that the Syria is, is not a, a league that's wide open and, uh, and not physical. I mean, it's, it's so tactically rigid and, and, it's physical for Christian Pulisic. I don't know if he's going to get the room that you you would want him to have in that type of league. I, I'm thinking more like playing on an Ajax where you're going to be playing Champions League. It's an open league. He's going to have a lot of space. That's where he can grow into becoming his best, the best version of Christian Pulisic, a little bit less pressure. And then from there, you're playing Champions League matches where you can, you know, still elevate in Champions League. That could be a great spot for him. A, a, a Dutch league, yeah, you're not playing in – the Champions League teams all the, all the, every week, but you are on the best team. You're playing every time, and you still play at top level competition in Europe. Ajax would be a really interesting move because of all the things that you mentioned, and because their players. Are I'm so yes solid. on Ajax for any one of our young players. I, I I I mean, but that's also because I just have an obsession with like I want our players to go there as the next step. Like MLS should just form a full like an exclusive partnership with Ajax and PSV. And that's it. You go one or the other if you get sold. <laughs> and you got to start there. Uh, because like that's the a amount great of, stepping stone into the, the rest amount of, Europe, of stars sure. that have gone there first from their home countries and then became the big stars, um, especially mostly for our attacking players. But even like players. Uh, well, back, John O'Brien, John back, O'Brien you know? played at Ajax. He got identified at 16. He grew up in my area, John O'Brien. And we were mm-hmm. like, who's the kid? We go look at tournaments. Who's the kid that's getting scouted by Ajax? Because even then there was that vibe about what Ajax does and the players that they produce. And then Beasley, DeMarcus played it uh, with PSV as well. I, that would be amazing. I would love that to happen. So let's talk now, keep it in the Premier League. Let's talk about Leeds. They're at home to Aston Villa. Jesse Marsh has come out and confirmed that Luke Ayling, Liam Cooper, and Junior Firpo are all back this weekend. And Rodrigo could return from a shoulder problem. Uh, that Those first three names are all more defensive-minded. But the Rodrigo one is interesting because when I look at leads they've got Bamford who looks to be back at full health the number nine you got Jack Harrison on the left side former NYCFC product and then if Rodrigo comes in at the right you also have Sinistera who just scored two goals for Colombia against Mexico who scored two very good goals by the way you're not going to sit Sinistera so you got Sinistera on one side Harrison on the other if Rodrigo is ready does Brendan Aronson have to make way that's interesting and then you got Tyler Adams obviously and this is a big game for for leads overall uh heath i'll throw this one back to you to start what you what are you what are you expecting here do you think jesse would even consider sitting in tyler and brendan given the minutes that they put in with the u.s i mean it, that d- tends to be a theme right which is like uh minute management right load management is a really important part and and while they didn't have to travel much i think that takes away a lot of the things that we would do, go through mm-hmm, when you go through mm-hmm. qualifying and you come back on a you know two days before match and you're exhausted and jet lagged and also coming off of minutes played and all that stuff taken into effect. I don't think you necessarily have to, you know, maybe, maybe your second, third sub out or you're rotating them, but like they've been core to the team. Um, so I, I think that you continue with them and, and also, you know, make that statement that you, you're, you know, we're, we're, we're building a Leeds America now and you can't turn your back <laughs> on them when all of us, when all of our fans are, you got to ride, you got to ride with these guys. Cause they are, they are helping your team get results right now. Okay. And then, Charlie, Brendan Aronson didn't start against Saudi Arabia. And when he came on, 
I don't really remember him doing much. And he was relatively quiet against Japan as well. It looks like at the very least, even if he starts, he's going to be central. And I don't know if that's what's best for us, at, you know, from thinking through the lens or seeing, looking through the lens of a U.S. men's national team perspective. We kind of want him out on the wing because we feel like he's better there. You just want him playing. Let's be real. I mean, I want him just having minutes, just continue to, to compete. And he's got to get stronger. And he, he's got he's to figure out ways to get on the ball and, and beat you just outside of just running and, and moving into spaces. So um, it's, it's, it's a great league. I mean, it's the best league in the world. I just hope he gets uh, a chance to continue to d develop and, and be the player that we need him to be with the U.S. Men's National Team. Yeah, I'm curious too, and I'd love to get Jesse's thoughts. We got to get him on the show at some point. I, I yes. you know what? I promised everybody's we'll get Jesse on the show before the World Cup begins. That's that's my new goal and our new target at this point because I want to get his make, thoughts. Did on you just things. promise that? I did. Okay. I, cool. Is that something I like I can, that. We'll no. see if I can follow through. That's that's yeah, my goal that's a, at this moment. I, I uh, believe. I personally, I personally, Jimmy, believe that you're telling the truth right now. But like, you know, we've also got to make it happen. <laughs> <you know? laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, uh, Jesse said when I went over to Leeds, he said that he would come on the show. It's just a matter of when that works best for his schedule as also as when, Je when jeffy when that. jesse's 72 and he's like jimmy i promise is a promise you know? <laughs> I, promise is a I know problem. it's 2046 but like you know i didn't say when uh that's true he could he could give me the i didn't say when excuse <laughs> yeah.